Today we're going to be talking about combining non-metal oxides and water. First, let's break down what this means. Okay, what does this mean? So let's look at our parts individually and see what things we can identify. We see non-metal oxide. What does that mean? Well, it's going to be your non-metals like phosphorus, nitrogen, those. It's not a metal. Pretty self-explanatory oxide. So it's going to be something like SO3. It's your sulfur, a non-metal, and your oxygen from the oxide to make a compound. And then water. We know what water is. H2O. Basic. And then we're going to make an oxy acid. What does that mean? Well, if we look back, we say our oxy from our, like, ox. It's going to be our compounds here, but an acid. And what does the acid mean? Remember, it's with the hydrogen in front. So we're going to take our hydrogen from our water and our acid, those, and we're going to put it in front. And we're going to make an oxy acid. This is not the right formula, but this is what it's going to be. Okay, looking at this first example, what do we see? We look at this and we see, oh, it's our non-metal and oxygen. It's our non-metal oxide. And H2O, it's water. We know those. And I'm going to continue to work um, down here just for legibility purposes. So, what does a non-metal oxide and water produce? An oxy acid. And what does an ox acid always have to start with? It has to start with our hydrogen. So we take our hydrogen here, and we start it with a hydrogen. Then what do we do? This is the part where we need to figure out what compound with sulfur we need to use. This is where we find the charges and we look at the back of our periodic tables. Let's look at our sulfur and just figure that what that is first. I'm going to write it down here. We have our SO3. And what's our rule always with compounds? The charges need to equal zero. So whatever this plus this is, needs to equal zero. Well, what's the charge of an oxygen? We look at our periodic table and we see it's a negative two. Or with enough practice, you might just remember that. So, one, one oxygen is a negative two. But how many oxygens do we have? We have three. So we need to multiply the negative two by the three, and that means the oxygen would get a charge of negative six. And then, remember, we have to make it zero. So how do we make this a zero? We use sulfur with a charge, has to have the charge of a positive six. And that, so that way we know when Whatever we put here, we have to keep this sulfur a positive 6. And when we go through that, we'll see how to do that. Let's look at our, our chart here. And this will go into how many hydrogens we need later. So what's the charge? Well, let's first identify what are the sulfur compounds we can use. We can use sulfite or sulfate. And they both have a charge of negative 2, so when we're balancing our acid, we're going to have to keep in mind that both of them are negative 2. Okay, when doing our equation here, first let's write out our components. SO, and this is the whole thing where we need to make it 0. Remember the charges we just looked at? Both... Um, sulfite and sulfate both have a charge of negative 2, so no matter which one we use, this thing will have a negative 2 over it, 
And so bring that charge down, there will be two hydrogens, no matter which one we use. So now we can just focus on figuring out if we need four oxygens or three oxygens. This is where we bring back the charge of our original equation. We, we figured out that the charge of the sulfur is positive six because three, because one oxygen is negative two, you multiply by three, you get a negative six, balance out, you get a positive six. So this has to be a six. What's the charge of one hydrogen? It's a, it's a one. So we get a one. Oh, it's a positive one. So we get a one. But how many hydrogens are there? There's two. So you multiply the one by two and it's a two. So now remember our rule with it has to equal zero. Look at it. What number do we need here to get this to equal zero? What's two plus six? It's eight. So whatever, it needs to be a minus eight right here. And how do we get that? We look at our oxygen. What's the charge of oxygen? Remember, it's a negative two. So how many of those do we need to make it a negative eight? We need four. And we can go back and just check if everything's balanced. How many sulfurs are there? There's one and there's one. How much hydrogen is there? There's two and there's two. Now, how much oxygen is there? There's three here and one over here, so that makes four. And there's four down here, so it all works out. Okay, let's start with this next example. This one's a little different. What's our first step that we always do? We identify what we're working with so we know what our product is gonna be. Well, we look at this and we see phosphorus. Phosph is phosphorus a metal? No, it's not. And we see our oxygen. So it's a non-metal oxide. And we say our H2O, obviously it's our water. So what are those two gonna make? It's gonna make an oxy acid. It's so the first thing that you start with in an acid. It starts with a hydrogen from our water. Now we have to figure out which compound we need to use with phosphorus. So how do we do that? We look for the charge of our original phosphorus because we need to keep it the same. So here's our original nonmetal oxide. And remember, the charges always have to equal zero. So let's start with our oxygens. What's the charge of an oxygen? It's a negative two. And how many are there? There's five. So there's a negative 10 here. And so what does this number need to be? This needs to, number needs to be a 10 to balance it out because 10 minus 10 is zero. But if we look at this, we see there's two phosphorus. So that means that each phosphorus is going to be a five. Because remember, our if you multiply the five, by the two, it's a 10, just like with our oxygen, each oxygen is a two, and you multiply it by five oxygens, you get a 10. It's the same deal. So each, so our original phosphorus has a charge of five. Next, we're going to go back to our periodic table. We're gonna look at the charges of our compounds with phosphorus. We see phosphite and phosphate both have a charge of negative three. So when we go back to our acid, just like last time, there's going to have to be three hydrogens to balance it out because of the whole bring, like, bring down the charges rule. So we're going to write out our components of our compound, our phosphorus and our oxygen. And remember, we just looked at the charges. that They both have a negative three, so that means it's going to cross down and there's going to be three hydrogens. But now we have to do the deal where we figure out how many oxygens there are. So first, let's look at our, our positive so we can figure out how much negative we're going to need. And what's the charge of a hydrogen? Positive 1. 
And how many are there? There's three. So there's going to be three. And what's the charge of our phosphorus? Remember from the what we did earlier, it's a five. This is not working great. It's a five. So what do three and five make? Three and five make eight. So we have to make it so our oxygen has a charge of negative eight. And what is a oxygen? It's a negative two. How many of those do we need to make this a negative eight? We need four because negative two times four is negative eight. So this is our answer. Okay, I'm technically not wrong here. That is the right, it, it is H3PO4, but I forgot to go back and balance, and if you look, look, there's two hydrogens in water and three hydrogens in our, in our product, there, so it doesn't work out, and so you're gonna have to go back and balance that, which I did not do, but if you need help with that, just go back to the first video in this playlist.